Let's see the breakfast and plus TV Africa right here. Uh, we're looking at the second. Com we're looking at our conversation this morning. Labour Union has asked Buhari to constitute a board immediately for the N uh, the NDDC. And we'll have a guest joining the conversation, Abu Mere or Sarah. He's a legal practitioner and a notary public. It's good to have you join us this morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, yes, it's my pleasure to be here this uh, morning. Well, uh, a bit of a background, you know, to our conversation this morning. Now, the Senate had in November 2019 confirmed 15 nominees sent by the president as and DDC board members. The president has sent the names of the nominees led by Pius Udubu to the Senate in October. However, President Mohammed Buhari refused to inaugurate the nominees following the clearance by the Senate during the confirmation process. The president also ordered a forensic audit of the operation of the organization. That's the NDDC from 2001 to 2019 also before the nominees were cleared by the Senate. The Minister of Niger Delta, Goswila Pabio, named an interim management committee for the NDDC. And in recent times, the Amalgamated Union of Public Corporation, Civil Service Technical and Recreational Services Employees has called for the inauguration of a board of the Niger Delta Development Commission, that's the NDDC. The group is an affiliate of the Nigerian Labour Congress and said it is imperative to save the commission from destruction. The union appealed to President Mohamed Buhari, National Assembly, Senate President Ahmed Lawan, House of Representatives Speaker Femi Bajabiamila and Mr. Niger Delta Affairs Umana Umana to take steps to ensure that the NDDC delivers on its mandate. According to the union, in uh, January 2019, the NDDC managing director, uh, that's in Simai Kere, and the chairman, Senator Victor uh, Doma Egba, resigned the appointment to contest election in their state. Their position should have been filed in, in accordance with Section 5, Paragraph 3 of the established acts of the commission. Uh, like I mentioned earlier on, we have uh, Abu Mere Osara, who is a legal practitioner. He joins the conversation this morning. O Osara, it's good to have you join us. Uh, thank you for having me. Mm. <laughs> Quickly, what are your thoughts on this now? And I mean, you know, for a long time, uh, the NDDC seemed to be, you know, operating without a board, some sort of direction leadership right here. What are your thoughts? Well, it's uh, a rather unfortunate uh, situation that we find ourselves. And uh, if you follow the trajectory, uh, the head of state, uh, you would not really be surprised that uh, we are this uh, sorry pass. What uh, is going on with uh, the NDDC is, uh, is typical of uh, what is uh, wrong with Nigeria, particularly since uh, 2015, when uh, General Buhari uh, came on board. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, sad. Uh, one would have thought that uh, uh, having been um, a military governor, having been a petroleum minister, and the military head of state and the chairman of Petroleum Trust Fund, and then uh, having contested to the highest office in Nigeria about three or four different occasions, and then he now is not democratically elected, that uh, the, uh, the president would have been broad minded enough and be uh, a capacity and mindset to do what is said. It is test that, quite contrary to the clear provisions of the, the NDDC Act, the press uh, decided to act more in breach of the, of the law by uh, refusing to act in compliance with the clear provisions of the Act. I'm not, I'm not surprised. 
because it seems uh, the, the, the president recall when he was uh, newly sworn in in 2001, one of his uh, official visits out of the country to the United States, he made that allegory of uh, 97% and 5%. And I believe that is what the president made comes to the question of uh, uh, the United indeed, uh, zone. You and I will recall the issues and the situation that uh, Nigeria faced leading up to the setting up of the con during the Oras and Job Bridge. I mean that the, the national so con need to address the national data question. For the first time, one I, that the National Assembly will override the veto power of the president. That is why you find out that since uh, 1999, the NDDC Act is the only law enacted by the National Assembly of Nigeria that was not signed, that has not been signed by successive presidents. The National Assembly had to do start to a very nationalistic and patriotic in their endeavor, when the, uh, the president, General Lushiko Obasanjo, declined to sign the act as passed, the National Assembly came together, united as one, and passed the law into effect. In 2015, after he was uh, sworn in, the first act of the president with respect to the NDDC was to appoint a, a sole administrator. And it was pointed out to that by the act, the act does not recognize the composition of uh, administration of the commission by means of a sole administratorship. And the president went ahead to appoint His Excellency, S. Mike Kere, as the MD, and, uh, and uh, Senator Udomayeba saying as chairman, one would have thought that thereafter the president would have uh, been sufficiently equipped to realize the framers of the NDC Commission Establishment Act were very careful when setting up commission when they made copious provisions regarding the manner of appointment of the chairman and the managing director. Section four of the NDC is very clear. As you find that the manager, the chairman of the commission shall be appointed term of four years an alphabetical for their ninth that comprises membership of the commission and arranging an alphabetical order starting from Abba to the last. And that the first chairman, Chief Onyema, uh, if I remember his name. And then with respect to the appointment of the managing director of the, of the commission, John 2 is also very clear, very quite explicit that the MD director shall be appointed as a quantum of oil produced, generated from the state, from the producer to the worst. So clearly, the law has given to the president the mode has simplified the order of session. The Lord don't admit of appointment of an interim management or what the president has decided for his best known to him provide in error. I will declare provisions of the act of the act. 
So the, the call by the, the is a right call, and it's in sync with all calls that has been made by all well-meaning Nigerians since 2019, appealing, pleading with the president to constitute the board and have a substantive marriage director in line with the provisions of the National Assembly has passed the resolutions and has of passed imploring the president to constitute the board and marriage director in line with the provisions of, of, of the act so that the, the, the purpose for which the commission was set could be realized. But the president chose on his own not to hack in to their call. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, now I say to myself, you have to remember that the team is winding down. We have just about seven months. Even though it's the right call, but I, I, I wonder whether it's the right time the call. Yeah. And also on that, have regard to the, the, the way the president has treated all appeals from leaders of thoughts, I recall, Niger Delta leaders. Yeah, pay the, the Barrister, so, so, sorry to interrupt please. you, ba Barrister, uh, please, sorry to interrupt you. You rightly said that uh, you talked about the NDDC Act uh, and you said that this uh, trend of um, having a sole administrator interim management committee uh, for the commission is not in in you know following in step with the NDDC Act. You also talked about the entreaties to the president from different stakeholders. Um, but w when the NDDC uh, you know when the NDDC interim management um, uh, yeah, committee headed by the sole administrator was set in place. Um, uh, Mr. Efim Akwa being the sole administrator in 2020, um, we had different groups coming up for and against. One of those who came up uh, to support the move by Mr. President uh, is the South-South Emerging Leaders Forum, who in 2020, the same December 2020, when the, the appointment of Efim Akwa was announced, uh, lauded President Muhammad Buhari for appointing Efim Akwa uh, as the NDDC sole administrator. And they said that... Um, the president acted in line with the act setting up, up the commission. Um, that's what they're saying, that he acted in line with the act setting up the commission. And the, the forum appealed, you know, um, to those against or agitating against the appointment of uh, this man to give peace a chance for the development of the region. So what, what do you say to that? Uh, that some group is saying this is in line with the, uh, with the commission. In fact, what the, the group, uh, this is Niger Delta... Uh, South, sorry, South South Emerging Leaders, which is a, a group comprising of professionals in this, from the South South. What they said is, quote, um, this is not the first time that a sole administrator is being appointed for the NDDC. Their statement, this was in 2020, December 2020, their statement continued. It will be recalled, quote, it will be recalled in, that in 2015, the Minister of Transportation, Mr. Rotary Amici, appointed Mrs. Beam Cemetery and a Joe woman and his former aide as sole administrator, this is what I'm quoting their statement here, as sole administrator of the NEDC after sacking the Dan Abia-led management uh, of the commission. Like this is, I'm quoting what they wrote. Uh, so he's saying it's not the first time. And this, they said, quote, our appeal to the entire people of the Niger Delta is to support the new leadership of the NDDC to deliver on its mandate and supervise the completion of the ongoing forensic audit ordered by the federal government. Well, uh, my immediate reaction is that uh, perhaps that group, they were speaking in error, not properly advised, and all they did not have the benefit of, uh, uh, of uh, through the, uh, the clear provisions of the Establishment Act. Section 12 of uh, the NDDC Act is very clear. And with your kind permission, I'll just uh, read out. Please, Section 12, Source 1 of the Act, provides as follows. There shall be for the Commission a managing director and two electors who shall be indigenous of oil producing areas starting 
with the member states of the commission with the highest production cotton of oil of oil and shall rotate amongst the states in order of production. Now, if you go to the entire section provision and the you will find no provision is made for the appointment of a sole administration. Is it regrettably, you see, the, the, the uh, current uh, regime has uh, over successfully you know, launched uh, onslaught on the rule of law and uh, tend to track on impunity. Uh, what we have is a situation of having the, the rule of law of men. And that's why uh, the trample on clear provision of the law, they do as they like. I'm not surprised, perhaps because my sex of the president, perhaps he has a thing or two against Niger Delta, against the South South, the goose that lays the gold egg. And it's rather unfortunate that. Uh, since 2015, the, the cry of marginalization of the Niger Delta, the cry of oppression of the minorities and the Niger Delta, by this regime, you see, is, uh, is a very worrisome development. But alas, we are confronted by the fact that in less than seven months' time, this regime will run its course. Hopefully, after May 2023, we'll have a new leader who will be broad-minded enough, who will not be actuated by primordial sentiment, nepotistic sentiment, and who will take there as one whole constituency, who will incorporate, who will not be 7% and 5% of the country as a dog. And who is because they didn't vote for this regime in 2004 and 2019. And because this ruling today, they do not believe in philosophy of the composition and establishment of the NDDC Act. Uh, that is why they have systematically put in place a skip muzzle the real dream of the of act and the aspiration of the Niger Delta. And of the allies is on some of the Niger for such side of the dream and dream of the Niger Delta people. It will just you know that there is and the time that the president was forwarded the names of Bob to the elite, there are also names of, of uh, uh, the Human Commission to the Senate. All right. But God of it, that of office has since been constituted. And they are up and running. Okay, but, but Marissa, sorry, we, we're having a bit of a, a network problem with you and. Uh, uh, that, that is interfering with the quality of the audio coming from your end. Uh, but I, I was going to ask you, you know, is there nothing in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that allows the president to, to get away with this? Uh, because we, we see that, you know, from recent history that the president really acts uh, without seeing something in the Constitution that gives him overriding powers of sorts. And uh, it's not new that sometimes the constitution or the laws will give powers to certain organizations or provisions that allow things to be done in certain ways. But um, those, those, those provisions will be taken away uh, by the constitution, which will give you just one line to say the president can still do this in spite of that. And I've been studying section five of the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria just to see if there's some, anything in there that uh, we can hold on to. We um, really haven't seen anything, uh, but of course, Section 5 of the Constitution says, subject to the provisions 
of this constitution, the executive powers of the Federation shall be vested in the president uh, and may be subject, as Afo said, and to the provisions of any law by the national. So does the, are we sure the president is not doing this based on the powers vested in him as the president of Nigeria in the constitution that may give room for some sort of loophole you know, for him to get away with this? Yeah, but Barrister, did you hear me, please? Hello? Okay, yes, please go. Yes. Please go. Yeah. Yes, President of Nigeria uh, to on oath to uphold not only provision of the Constitution, but also of all other laws in Nigeria. Now, with respect to the South Hand, the Niger Delta, there is a law passed by the National Assembly which has studied a regulation of how that particular commission should be governed. And the president of Nigeria, having sworn on oath to including the NDDC is engaged and obliged to observe and follow the provisions NDDC Act. The executive powers of president conferred by section five of the constitution does not detract from the proof of the NDDC Act. There's no problem in the Constitution that gives power to the President to act contrary to the clear provisions of an enabling statute. Rather, what the President should do by his own office is to enforce and act in accordance with that act, with that particular law. So it's rather unfortunate that the President to part. And you write from uh, 2019, 2015, starting with the appointment of uh, the sole administrator, Ibn Cemetery, all that clearly the provisions of the NDDC Act. Even the setting up of forensic audit is also against the clear provision of the NDDC Act. Because the NDDC Act has made, has made provision well, for monitoring know, Sarah. of... Oh, we, we have to let you go now. We, we sincerely apologize. The, the network from your end is not too good. Uh, and also, we're out of time. But we would like to thank you very much for your time. Uh, interesting uh, thoughts there. The lawyer has given us a lot to chew on. Merci uh, uh, today. Um, some have said, you know what, yes, the law is there, but they also look at morality, look at the, um, the protection of the rights of the people, protection of, um, you know, the, the finances of the nation, um, stepping in to do what is right. And people have talked about, okay, look at, you know, about six trillion naira being spent on the NDC in, in how many years? Um, what is there to show for it? We need to find out where the money went. And initially, there was uh, support for this forensic audit. You know, some support. And even the, the, the gentleman, F.E.M. Akwa, went around visiting the likes of Anki Briggs and other mm -hmm. people in the Niger Delta, and they were received him warmly, you know, sort of a goodwill talk. But um, it seems that people have grown impatient, you know, because, you know, they want to see some action. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But some so, people are saying so that, you know, administratively, it's, it's, I mean, unfortunately, we're out of so, time. Yes. Or, it's taking too long. When you say, it's yes, it's long. taking too long because it, it would slow down the entire process. I mean, where you have uh, some certain critical decisions that need to be taken. Projects have been embarked on. Who now and approves and all of that? Yes. It becomes quite worrisome. Yes. But yes. that's where we, we, we would take a break this morning on that discussion. We hope that we'll have some other time, you know, to talk about this. Thank you so much for being part of the breakfast. We appreciate you if you missed out on, on any part of it. It will be beautiful to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And do you subscribe to our YouTube channel? We are at Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. My name is Messi Boko. Have a fantastic day. And my name is Kofi Bartels. We'll return tomorrow. Good morning.